Friends, welcome to worship on Sunday, August the 29th. I can't believe it's the end of August already. I wanted to let you know that I will be away with Anne celebrating our anniversary. I'll be gone from the 1st, returning to the office on the 7th of September. You'll be in great care as Reverend Esther and Reverend Lorraine look after the pastoral care needs of the parish while I am away. Friends, let's prepare our hearts for worship.
Father brought us forth by the word of truth that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. We gather our hearts and worship. Let's take a moment's quiet. Friends, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us give glory to God. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your the love of your name. Increase in us true religion, nourish us in all goodness, and of your great mercy keep us in the same. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now we're reading from this delightful book, The Song of Solomon. A reading from the Book of Solomon. The voice of my beloved, look, he comes, leaping upon the mountains, bounding over the hills. My beloved is like a gazelle or a young stag. Look, there he stands behind our wall, gazing in at the windows, looking through the lattice. My beloved speaks and says to me, arise my love, my fair one, and come away, for now the winter is past. The rain is over and gone. The flowers appear on the earth. The time of singing has come. And the voice of the turtle dove is heard in our land. The fig tree puts forth its figs and the vines are in blossom. They give forth fragrance. Arise my love, my fair one, and come away. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you. 
with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Now when the Pharisees and some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus, they noticed that some of his disciples were eating with defiled hands, that is, without washing them. For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they thoroughly wash their hands, thus observing the tradition of the elders. And they do not eat anything from the market unless they wash it. And there are also many other traditions that they observe, the washing of cups, pots, and bronze kettles. So the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, Why do your disciples not live according to the tradition of the elders, but eat with defiled hands? He said to them, Isaiah prophesied rightly about you hypocrites, as it is written, This people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching human precepts as doctrines. You abandon the commandment of God and hold to human tradition. Then he called the crowd again and said to them, Listen to me, all of you, and understand. There is nothing outside a person that by going in can defile, but the things that come out are what defile. For it is from within, from the human heart, that evil intentions come, fornication, theft, murder, adultery, avarice, wickedness, deceit, licentiousness, envy, slander, pride, folly. All these evil things come from within, and they defile a person. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, you Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Friends in Christ, let us pray. By the grace and power of the Holy Spirit, may only the truth be spoken, and may only the truth be received and lived. Amen. You know this already, that love is a very powerful emotion. They say that love is blind, but when we are in love, we see things in others and in our world that we just plain don't see without love. Love has the ability to open our eyes, to lift us up, even to carry us away to bliss. But love also calls for truth. And those who love us sometimes tell us important truths about ourselves that we might not see. I've been thinking about my dad a lot lately and how I appreciated his love. He was strong and kind, thoughtful and caring. I always knew that he wanted the best for me and would support me so that I might be my best. His love was also a truth-telling love. When I was a teen exploring ideas about future in careers, he was encouraging, but also asked the hard questions that others might not. One of my heroes at the time was General George Patton, the famous armored commander. So my family and I toured West Point Academy, the training school for the U.S. Army. I entertained the idea of becoming an armored officer. On the campus, we looked up at a massive M1 battle tank on display. I thought it was so cool. My dad turned and looked at me and said, but Stephen, could you really drive that over someone? It was a terrible question. It was a true question, and it ended my military career fantasies and redirected my life. Love hopes for the best, but speaks the truth. In our readings today, we have these two aspects of God's love for us on clear display. The Song of Solomon speaks of God's amazing love for us. We rarely read this unique book in the Bible, so I need to say a few comments about it first. The Song of Solomon may have been written by wise King Solomon. It is a collection of several poetic cycles concerning love between a young woman and a young man. It gets a bit steamy at parts. See chapter five, and it's remarkable. 
editors of the Jewish Study Bible write this, the song's positive focus on human erotic love, its silence regarding the central theological and historical themes of the rest of the biblical text, and the centrality of its female character make it unique within the biblical canon. If the Song of Solomon is so unique in the Bible, we might wonder why it's included. Well, we certainly benefit from the knowledge that physical desire, when shared and consented to, is a good and holy thing. It's wonderful to hear a woman's voice in Scripture as well. Dr. Lisa Wolf, professor of Old Testament, writes, One unique aspect of the Song of Songs which is the Song of Solomon, is that the woman's voice dominates the book. Furthermore, unlike some other biblical references to sexualized relationships, this book does not contain domination or submission of the woman by her lover. This woman claims her voice, her desire, and her lover as her own, and does so proudly and poetically. Her delight with him is palpable. Her speech includes the twice repeated impassioned phrase, arise my love, my fair one, and come away. How lovely that we hear him beckoning her through her own voice. The woman in the Song of Solomon is an important role model, for she is strong, and worthy of much respect and study. But there's more to this story and the traditional interpretations of the text. In the Jewish tradition, the Song of Solomon was understood not merely as a poetic celebration of human love, but more deeply as a description of the love relationship between God and Israel. In Christianity, this interpretation morphed into a description of the love between Christ and his church. This love relationship then includes you and me. If the voice of the woman in the poem represents the church and the young beloved male represents Christ, we delight in the strength of Christ who leapt through the barriers of death, hatred, violence, rejection, human sin, and indifference, all to purchase our salvation. We delight that we, his church, are the apple of his eye, and that his loving attention is ever toward us. If we are attentive, we as church hear his voice calling us, Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away. Come away from the cares of the world to empty your heart, your mind, your fears in the intimacy of prayer. Come away from your daily routines to worship God. Come away from indifference and walk for justice and reconciliation. And at the end of our days, we hope to hear the voice of the Master calling us to come away on the final voyage into everlasting light. On the last day, the voice of the Savior will call us to lay down our age-battered bodies, to let go of the fever of life. Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away. For now the winter is past, the rain is over and gone, the flowers appear on the earth, the time of singing has come. The voice of Christ is the voice of love which calls us to peace and rest. But the voice of love is also the voice of truth. The voice of Jesus is also the voice of truth which challenges us. His voice is still and always the voice of love, but it is also the voice of truth that can be difficult to hear. In our Gospel reading, Jesus is having an argument with the scribes and Pharisees about the true religious life. The issue is not hand cleansing, really, or ritual washing, 
The real issue is this. The scribes and Pharisees prioritized conformity to human tradition over obedience to God. Jesus incisively confronts the religious leaders. You abandon the commandment of God and hold to human tradition. See the issue? The abandonment of God. To abandon God is to choose the path of spiritual death. God is the God of life, of love, of forgiveness, of mercy, justice, reconciliation, and peace. To abandon God is to forfeit all these things. Turning from the religious leaders, Jesus literally cries out to his simple crowd, it isn't the stuff that you put into your body that defiles the human heart. Instead, it is what comes out of the human heart. Jesus isn't pointing the finger only at the Pharisees and scribes or expressing the superiority of the simple members of the crowd. Jesus is clearly pointing the finger at them, at every human, at us. Scholar Joel Marcus tells us that in the original text, the Greek word anthropos, for human or person, is found 11 times in the span of Mark 7, verses 7 to 23. 11 times. Jesus is speaking about the human condition. The scholar Marcus writes, The basic problem Christians should be concerned about, Mark seems to be saying, through this striking pile-up of the word anthropos, is not how or what one should eat, but the internal corruption of the anthropos. It is this malignancy that chokes the life out of tradition, turns it into an enemy of God, contorts it into a way of excusing injustice, and blinds those afflicted by it to their own culpability for the evils that trouble the world. The problems in the world find their roots in the human heart. The problem of terrified people fleeing Afghanistan arises from the cold human heart. The blazing fires burning in Europe, the Mediterranean and in the Pacific Northwest arise from the coldness of the human heart towards sustainable living. The abuses of the residential schools and the ongoing injustices against our native peoples flow from the corruption of the human heart. It really isn't about all of that bad news that's out there, but rather what flows from the human heart. Walt Kelly, who created the Pogo comic strip, drew a poster for Earth Day in 1970. He drew a scene of a beautiful forest floor with towering trees, but the ground was covered with garbage. The character Pogo stands there sadly with a small bag and a pointed stick for picking up garbage, and the caption reads, We have met the enemy, and he is us. We have met the enemy, and she is us. From the human heart flows evil intention, sexual sins, murder and hatred, racism and sexism, thefts of all kinds, selfish greediness, lies, jealous envy of others, talking about others behind their backs and slandering them, and the list goes on. We need a good physician of the heart. Jesus is the healer of our souls, but he won't just bind up a festering wound. Covering up an infected wound only makes it worse. It needs to be cleaned out. He is the great physician and desires healing for our hearts. They must be cleansed. As we come to him for mercy, as we come to him for forgiveness, as we receive his pardon, 
we need to turn around and do the hard work to apologize to others we may have hurt or have given the cold shoulder to. As we let go of our indifference, we need to turn and actually get engaged for justice. As we do, we shall be cleansed and healed. God's love for us has two faces, the face of radical acceptance along with the face of difficult truth. We have met the enemy and they are us. Let us recognize and repent of our own contributions to the poor state of the world and with the help of the reconciling Holy Spirit, do the work it takes to make amends. Then our hearts will be free to hear anew the invitation to full life and love. Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away, for now the winter is past, the rain is over and gone, the flowers appear on the earth, the time of singing has come. Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away into the grace and love of Christ. Amen. Together in our homes, through the internet, let us affirm our faith. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us join our hearts in prayer. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Lord God, thank you for loving us even when we turn away from you. We are grateful for your constant care and concern. Though we feel unworthy of your great love, we thank you that through our weaknesses you give us strength. And in our wanderings, you show us the way. Amen. Amen. Responding to the petition, Lord, in your mercy, with the words, hear us, Lord. Most high Lord, prepare a special place in your eternal kingdom for those who lead us in your church, those who pray with us and for us. Preach your word to us and shepherd us to spiritual growth in this community of faith in ever-changing ways. We pray, pray especially for our bishops, Andrew and Peter, our own clergy here at St. Philip's, Stephen, Esther, Lorraine, and our pastor, Amy. Guide them and protect them in their ministry. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear us, Lord. Lord. We give witness of your unconditional love to all who leave this world, this country, and this community. We express expectations that they will act for the safety, wholeness, and health of all your people. We especially pray for our Prime Minister, Justin Trudeau, our Premier, Doug Ford, and our Mayor, Frank Scarpetti. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear us, us, Lord. We pray today, Lord, for those countries, especially our own, that are, are experiencing uncontrollable wildfires. We pray for the country of Italy experiencing volcano eruptions, for Turkey and South China suffering pinnacle flooding, for the devastating earthquake in Haiti, and for our never-ending prayers for peace in the Middle East, specifically in Afghanistan. Comfort the lost and give them all hope, Lord, for restitution, healing, and hope for an encouraging future. Lord, in your mercy, hear yes, us, Lord. Lord. Lord, we give into your care our children who are going away from home to go to school. Keep them on a Christian path and help them to grow in their knowledge safely. Watch over them and help them make wise decisions and enjoy lifelong friendships. Lord, in your mercy, yes, hear us, Lord. Lord. Father, we pray for those who are having health issues those who are without jobs, 
those who are weary and alone, and those who minister and care for them. We pray now for the needs of those known to us at this time. For Gail, Ray, Mark, Virginia, Hannah, Sharon, Joanne, Bob, Rose, Joyce, Ricardo, Maggie, and Madeline, and those only to you, Lord. Give them the gift of comfort and courage and peace in their hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear us, Lord. Loving God, open our ears to hear your word and draw us closer to you that the whole world may be one with you as you are one with us. May the love of God our Father be in all our homes today. May the love of the Lord Jesus keep our hearts and minds always. May his loving Holy Spirit guide and bless the ones we love. We ask these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. God welcomes sinners and invites us to his presence. Let us confess our sins confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ is the Prince of Peace. Let us offer a sign of his peace. My friends, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Amen. Thank you. Friends, thank you for your financial support of our church. Let us pray. Merciful God, receive all we offer you this day. Give us grace to love one another, that your love may be made perfect in us. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Friends, the Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love you made us for yourself. When we turned away, you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your Son. You embraced us as your children and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. In Christ you shared our life that we might live in him and he in us. He opened his arms of love upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. On the night he was betrayed, at supper with his friends, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for all. As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As, he, as we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us one in Christ, our risen Lord. 
with your whole church throughout the world, we offer you the sacrifice of praise and lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven. Holy, holy, holy Lord. Let us pray as we sing together. comes to me will never be hungry, whoever believes in me will never thirst. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are they who trust in him. solidarity with you and on your behalf, longing for the day when we can gather again together. As I take communion, I encourage you to pray the prayer of spiritual communion, knowing that the Lord is near to us than our own nearest breath. Friends, the gifts of God for you, the people of God, thanks be to God. I'm not ready to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Blood of Christ, the cup of salvation.
Almighty God, you renew us at your table with the bread of life. May your holy food strengthen us in love and help us to serve you in each other. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Together with the angels, we say glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. And now may the road rise to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warmly upon your faces and the rains fall gently upon your fields. And until we meet again, may God hold you and all that you love in the hallow of his hand with the blessing of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. alleluia. in worship together today. A warm thank you too to those who supported the Walkathon by walking with us and for those of you who have donated in support of Toronto Urban Native Ministry. That web portal through our website is still available if you'd like to give in support of Toronto Urban Native Ministry. Just make a note on your electronic donation that it's for the Walkathon. Thanks so much. Have a blessed week this week. <music>